Hi folks, welcome to part 2 of our PA38 Tomahawk tutorial series in Microsoft Flight Simulator. In this part we will be covering the takeoff and en route navigation procedures in the aircraft. In part 1 we prepared the aircraft for flight, started the engine, taxied to the whole shore point of runway 27 at Liverpool and performed a ground check. So we are now ready to run through the before takeoff checks. Confirm that the battery and alternator switches are both set to on. Check that all flight instruments are reading correctly and that the altimeter is set to the airport's local barometric pressure by pressing the B key on your keyboard. Rotate the fuel selector to the fullest tank and switch on the electric fuel pump. Check that the carburetor heat lever is set to off and that the mixture lever is fully forward. Confirm that the magneto selector is set to both and then switch on the landing and strobe lights. The normal flap setting for the Tomahawk is fully up unless we are taken off from a short runway or a soft field. As we have most of the 7,500 feet runway available to us today, we can safely keep our flaps up. Rotate the pitch trim wheel until the indicator sits slightly after neutral. Finally, confirm that both doors are locked and we have full and free movement of the flight controls. Remembering that due to friction on the nose gear, we should not attempt to move the rudder pedals when stationary. With the before takeoff checks complete, have a look left and right to verify that there is nothing on the approach and that the runway is clear and then taxi onto the runway. Line up with the runway centre line and then come to a stop. Smoothly apply full power and as the aircraft starts to gather speed, keep it running down the centre line with rudder inputs. As we approach 53 knots, gently raise the nose of the aircraft. Make elevator inputs and adjust elevator trim as required to maintain the Tomahawk's best rate of climb speed of 70 knots. For now we'll continue to fly the runway heading of 266 degrees. When passing through 1000 feet, we can switch off the electric fuel pump and landing light. We can now begin a right turn to follow the River Mersey to the north and the city of Liverpool should start to come into view on the east side of the river. We will continue flying north for now until we reach our cruising altitude of 4,000 feet. Once level at 4,000 feet, reduce the throttle to the standard cruise position of 75% rated power which is approximately 2450 rpm based on the current altitude and temperature and the aircraft should maintain an airspeed of approximately 100 knots. We can now begin a right turn towards our first navid. With the VOR now in range, the CDI needle on the VOR indicator will indicate our deviation from the selected course. Rotate the OBS knob to identify the course to the VOR, approximately 100 degrees in this case, and turn onto that heading to fly directly towards it.
There is zero wind in this tutorial flight, so no head correction is required. The real Tomahawk doesn't have the luxury of an autopilot, so you will need to hand fly the climb, cruise and descent portions of the flight. However, as a quality of life feature, we have provided basic autopilot controls on the aircraft page of the AFB. During the cruise portion of the flight, it is important to remember that the engine is only being fed with fuel from a single tank at any given time. Therefore the fuel quantity in each tank should be carefully monitored. It is recommended that you change fuel tanks regularly and do not exceed a fuel imbalance of 5 US gallons. If you want to avoid worrying about switching fuel tanks, an automatic fuel selector option is provided on the aircraft page of the AFB. When hand flying, ensure the aircraft is trimmed correctly and regularly switch the fuel tanks to prevent a fuel imbalance will provide a stable, hands-off aircraft. With the aircraft stabilised in cruise, we can sit back and take in views across Merseyside and Greater Manchester. Before long, we should start to see Manchester Airport come into view directly ahead of us. At this altitude, any departures or arrivals will pass safely below our aircraft. As we pass overhead Manchester Airport and the Manchester VOR, the VOR2 from indicator will switch to a from indication, indicating that we are now flying away from the VOR. Make a slight left turn now to a heading of 096 degrees to fly outbound from the VOR towards Redford Gamson. Rotating the OBS knob on the VOR indicator to 096 degrees will help us maintain an outbound course of 096 degrees from the Manchester VOR. We should be able to see the city of Manchester off our left wing. This leg of the flight between Manchester and the Redford Gamson VOR is the longest leg of the flight and it should take approximately 40 minutes. During this leg we will pass over the Roland Hills of the Peak District National Park where we will see landmarks such as the Dove Holes Quarry and Hope Cement Works before passing south of the city of Sheffield. Now is also an ideal opportunity to take a quick look at some of the extensive features we've included in the P-38 Tomahawk from Microsoft Flight Simulator. Like the real P-38, our Tomahawk has a basic avionics fit as standard which is well suited to its role as a training and VFR touring aircraft. In the centre of the panel is the radio stack which features the GMA340 audio selector, the SL30 COM1 NAV1 radio, the SL40 COM2 radio and the GTX328 transponder. The Tomahawk can also be equipped with more capable GPS units for GPS navigation such as the GNS430-530 and the JTN650-750. The latter two requires either the PMS50 JTN750 or the TDS JTNXI, both available separately. There are so many features within these avionics that we feel they're worth their own dedicated video. Therefore we won't go into the avionics in depth in this tutorial series, but stay tuned for another video where we'll cover the navigation systems in depth. A couple of features on the SL30 which we will cover in this tutorial flight, including the OBS key. On the SL30, press the NAV key followed by the OBS key to display the unit's CDI. The OBS setting is now shown in the centre of the display with the CDI on the right. The aircraft icon is currently pointing down, indicating that we are flying from the VOR, wall and no deviation bars are shown because we are centred on the outbound course. If we adjust the course, the deviation bars then indicate if we are left or right of the selected course. The SL30 is also able to display DME information, allowing us to monitor our distance from the tuned VOR. With nav mode selected, press the cell key and then rotate the right outer knob until the show distance data option is shown. Press the enter key to enable the display of distance data. From left to right, the distance from the VOR is shown in nautical miles, the ground speed relative to the VOR is shown in knots, and the estimated time to the VOR is shown in hours and minutes. 
Moving away from the avionics stack, one other useful feature for navigation is the flight info section on the aircraft page of the AFB. This section shows a variety of real-time information related to everything from speed to fuel burn and range and endurance. Once we are approximately 25 nautical miles from the Manchester VOR, as indicated by the distance data on the SL30, we can now tune into our final VOR of this flight, Gamson VOR, into the NAV1 radio. On the SL30, press the NAV key and enter 112.80 into the standby field and then press the flip-flop key to place it into the active field. Continue flying to the Gamson VOR on a course of 096 degrees for now and we can adjust the OBS knob on the VOR indicator as necessary to align the CDI needle with the aircraft's current course towards the VOR. Alternatively, on the SL30 we can press the OBS button twice to not only display the OBS page but it also synchronises the NAV1 course so we can now fly directly to the VOR from our present position. As we pass overhead Redford Gamson, the VOR2 from indicator will again switch to a from indication. We now need to make a left turn to a heading of 050 degrees to fly outbound from the VOR towards Humberside Airport. We can set the OBS knob on the VOR indicator to 050 degrees to assist us in flying the outbound leg from the Gamson VOR on a course of 050 degrees. For additional situation awareness as we head towards Humberside, we can tune in the Kilo India Mike NDB located at Humberside Airport. By default, the Tomahawk isn't fitted with an ADF receiver, but a KR85 ADF system can be fitted by enabling the ADF option on the aircraft page of the AFB. Once this is enabled, the KR85 control unit will be fitted to the right side of the instrument panel and an ADF indicator will be fitted to the left side of the instrument panel. On the control unit, input the frequency to the Kilo India Mic NDB 365.0 and set the mode switch to ADF. On the ADF indicator, rotate the compass cord to match the aircraft's current heading and once in range of the NDB, the needle will indicate the direction to the NDB. As we now fly outbound from the Gamson Redford VOR, this will now be a good point to end this part of the tutorial series. If this part of the tutorial has been useful, why not give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and share the video with others. In the third and final part of this tutorial series, we will cover the descent, landing and shutdown.